Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. This is question number two from the International A Level Pure Mathematics P4, June, October 2020 Excel paper. And this question number two is about the binomial expansion, part A. We are asked to expand this bracket um, up to in ascending powers of x, means starting from the lowest power of x, which is be constant to going up to x squared, giving each coefficient as a fully simplified fraction. And they mention this statement here that the modulus of x is less than 4 over 5, which isn't actually needed in this question in terms of uh, we don't actually have to really understand what it means in this particular question, but we do have to understand what it means in our syllabus because sometimes they might ask you to expand this up to a certain, uh, you know, um, term and then they might say give a the condition for this expansion to be valid and this is the condition for this expansion to be valid so i'm going to explain that after i've expanded um you know why we have to write this and how this is derived now first of all when we expand something which is written in this form here where you have a power which is not a positive integer this is neither positive nor it is an integer, so it, you know, it has to be a positive integer. If it's not a positive integer, we cannot use the NCR method. The NCR method is where you have this button in your calculator where you can help to calculate some of the coefficients and it makes life very easy. So for this particular type of question, which you'll find in all of P4, uh, in P2 we use the NCR method because we only dealt with positive integer powers. But in P4, we'll, deal, we'll be dealing with n negative powers and non-integer powers, or both, like this is. We have to use a different method. And this method, uh, the formula for it can be found in the P2 booklet for uh, your formula sheet. And it looks like this. It says 1 plus x to the power of n is equal to 1 plus nx plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial, which means 2 times 1, times x squared, plus, and it continues on in the same pattern. We only need it up to x squared, but I'll just continue. n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 3 factorial, which means, remember, 3 times 2 times 1, times x cubed. So the x here stands for whatever's in this place here. So we have to write this bracket in this form. We have to have a 1 here. It can't be a 4 here. We have to take this 4 out of this bracket and, and have a 1 here. So how do we do this? And, you know, keeping this the same value. So we have 4 minus 5x to the power of minus, minus a half. Have to be very careful not to make mistakes with binomial expansion. It's very easy to make mistakes. Okay, so let's keep that there, is equal to, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to keep like a big bracket, I'm going to take the 4 out, and I'm going to write here 1, so this is like 4 times 1 is 4, I'm going to have a minus, and now I have to multiply 4 by something that gives me 5, well that means I have to divide this 5 by 4, which is 5 over 4, and then of course the x, and close that bracket, so this is 4 minus if I multiply that by, by the 4 by minus 5 over 4 and get minus 5, so 4 minus 5x, so they're exactly the same. But all of this must be raised to the power of negative a half, including this 4. You see, it's all part of it. Now I can split this up, and I can say this is 4 to the power of negative a half times 1 minus 5 over 4x to the power of negative a half. So now I have kind of written this in that form, and it's multiplied by 4 to the power of minus a half, now, 4 to the power of minus a half is the same as 1 over 4 to the power of a half. And 1 over 4 to the power of a half is the same as 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 over 2. So I can rewrite this now as uh, 1 over 2 times, in fact, why am I wasting that space? <clears throat> I might need that space later on. So I have 1 over 2 times, and I've got 1 minus 5 over 4 x to the power of negative a half. Now I can use my expansion here. So this is 1 plus n x. So 1 plus n, which is this 
power, which is minus a half, times x, which is whatever term is in this place here, including its sign, which is minus 5 over 4x. That's what the x is. The x in the formula is whatever term is in this position here. Okay, um, plus, and I'm going to have n times n minus 1, so it's going to be minus a half times, now minus a half minus 1 is minus 3 over 2, over 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, times, and I'm going to have minus 5 over 4x squared, plus, and I, I, I can stop there. So one second, I, I did a little thing that I shouldn't do here. I forgot the half. There's a half that's multiplying all of this. Okay, so be careful about that. That half is multiplying all of this. Okay, so now what I can say is this, if I simplify this, let me leave the half outside and simplify whatever's in here. So I'm going to have 1. Now this is a minus times a minus, which is a plus. So I'm going to have plus. Uh, that would be 5 over 8x. And I have a minus times a minus, which is a plus. And a minus term squared, which is also positive. So I'll end up with another positive term. And I'm going to have 1 times 3 over 8. So that's 3 over 8. And this is going to give me 25 over 16 um, x squared. And that's as far as that goes. So now I can just multiply everything by a half and write it out in a clearer way. So a half times 1 is a half. And a half times 5 over 8 is 5 over 16. So that's 5 over 16x. And I'm going to have 3 over 25, which is uh, 75 over 2 times 8, which is 16. 16 times 16 is going to give you, I think it's 256. Let's just make sure. So 16 times 16. Yep, 256. That's 256x squared. And so there we have it. We can say now that 4 minus 5x all to the power of negative a half is equal to, or approximately equal to, a half plus 5 over 16x plus 75 over 256x squared. And there is our expansion up to the term in x squared. Okay, now what I was mentioning uh, in the beginning is something important, and this expansion is not going to be valid unless whatever number goes into this position here. Okay, so in this case, what goes into this position here? Okay, the thing that is, because this is going to be a raise to the power of 1, then the raise to the power of 2, then raise to the power of 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. This is an infinite expansion. These will never ever stop. These terms will never ever stop. That's why that, you know we have to stop somewhere. But if we stop it somewhere like this, if we say that this is equal to that, that this is equal to that, we stop the expansion at a certain point, Okay, then that's only going to be something which is uh, true, that this will be equal to that, if the thing that you put inside this thing that gets squared and cubed and raised to the power of 4, if its magnitude is less than 1 because it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as you raise it to higher and higher powers and its value if it's less than one will be so insignificant it won't affect the you know value of the you know the, the expansion it won't affect its 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 total value it will be something that will only add a very small amount to its value or take away a very small amount from its value okay but if this magnitude of this thing was greater than one okay its magnitude is greater than one then what will happen is it's going to increasingly get bigger and bigger and bigger as you keep raising it to higher powers. So its magnitude is going to get really big. So you're going to keep adding or subtracting really big numbers to the expansion. And you, can't, you won't be able to stop it. I won't be able to say this is equal to that because if I carry on and the magnitude of this thing is going to be something big, it's going to keep adding bigger and bigger numbers to what I have got written here. So I won't be able to stop anywhere. I won't be able to say this is almost the same as that. So this is only valid if this thing... So you don't worry about the sign, just take the 5 over 4x if its magnitude is less than 1. Now, if I rearrange this, I'll have 5 over 4 times a magnitude of x is less than 1. Therefore, we can say the magnitude of x is less than, if I, if I cross multiply, 4 over 5. So that's 
the condition for which this is going to be valid. Now, in this particular question, as I mentioned in the beginning, we don't actually have to know that. But we do in the syllabus, um, and sometimes we are asked to give the condition for which this is a valid expansion. So that's what we have to do. So whatever basically comes, once we've written it as in the form 1 plus x to the power of n, so here 1 minus 5 over 4 x to the power of something, that thing here, regardless of the sign, you say that the modulus of that thing must be less than 1, and then you rearrange for x. So modulus of x is less than 4 fifths, and we get our uh, condition for which it is a valid expansion. Okay, so I digressed a little bit from our, um, you know, main answering of the question, just to go into that in case it does come up in a future paper. Okay, now part B. It says um, f of x equals 2 plus kx over root 4 minus 5x where k is a constant and the modulus of x is less than 4 fifths as we just discussed. Given that the series expansion of f of x in ascending powers of x is 1 plus 3 over 10x plus m times x squared where m is a constant, find the value of k. So part b is saying find the value of this k that's up here. So let's rewrite f of x first. We can rewrite this as a product of 2 plus kx and I can write this as a numerator as 4 minus 5x to the power of minus a half, which should look familiar, because we just expanded this up to x squared. Okay, so let's get what we expanded and bring it over here on this side. Okay, so here's our expansion of 4 minus 5x to the power of negative a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is the same as 2 plus kx uh, times, and I can write a half plus 5 over 16 times x plus 75 over 256x squared plus, okay. And I know that that, if I expand it, is going to be equal to 1 plus 3 over 10x plus mx squared. Okay, we know that, that the expansion of this is going to give us exactly what's written over there. Let me just... Okay, so now what I can do here is I can say let's compare. We want to find what um, k is. Okay, so k is the x. Um, if, if I expand this bracket here, let me expand this bracket here and see what I get. I'm going to get 2 times a half, which is 1. So you can see that's the same as that. That's fine. And 2 times 5 over 16, x, which is, um, that's going to be 5 over 8x. And 2 times 75 over 256, which is plus 75 over 128 x squared. And then I have kx times a half, which is going to be a half times kx. And kx times 5 over 16x, which is plus 5k over 16x squared. Plus, and I don't care about the rest, that's cubed. I'm only dealing with up to x squared. So I don't worry about the rest. Equals, and um, what I can say is, this is 1 plus 3 over 10x plus mx squared. So if we compare, if we compare the x terms, because I want to find what k is, on this side, um, first of all, let's, let's actually rewrite it in a more clearer fashion. Let's bring the x terms together. There's x terms and x squared terms. You have 1 plus, now you have 5 over 8 plus a half kx. So you have 5 over 8 plus a half k. That's the x term. And the x squared term is 75 over 128 plus 5k over 16. That's your x squared term. And that's equal to 1 plus 3 over 10x plus mx squared. So that's a bit clearer now. I can see that the comparing the x terms you can see 5 over 8 plus a half k must be the same as 3 over 10. So 5 over 8 plus a half k is equal to 3 over 10. And I can use this to calculate what uh, k is. Okay, because I can... Let me just get rid of the fractions. I don't like fractions. Let's multiply by 40. That will be the LCM of the denominators. So f multiplying both sides by 40. 5 over 8 times 40... Well, that's going to give you 25 because the 5, the 40, and the 8 cancel to give you 5. 5 times 5 is 25. A half times 40 is 20. 
So 25 plus 20k equals, and 40 times 3 over 10 will be 3 times 4, which is 12. So I can say that 20k equals 12 minus 25. So 20k is equal to negative 13. So k is equal to negative 13 over 20. So we've got the value of k, negative 13 over 20. And now we've got to also find the value of m, which we can use exactly what we've got up there to find the value of m, because we can see m is the x squared term. m is the x squared term. So this 75 over 128 plus 5 over 16k is equal to m. So we can say we compare the x squareds. We can see from that that 75 over 128 we can say m is equal to 75 over 128 plus 5k over 16. So we can then say that 75 over 128 plus 5 over 16 times k, which is minus 13 over 20. Um, okay, we can just stick this in the calculator and work out what it is. So we have 78 over 128 plus, and we're going to have uh, 5 over 16, and times, we're going to have a minus, and we're going to have 13 over 20. Close the bracket, and that gives us 49 over 128, 49 over 128. So we can say m is equal to 49 over 128, and there we have the answer to part B and part C of this question about binomial expansion. Um, this question is, as I said, from the June-October 2020 paper. If you want to see other questions answered from the same paper, you can click on the link which should appear somewhere over here. And the link for the playlist for binomial expansion of P4 will appear somewhere over here. You can, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the icon that should appear in the middle of the screen and on the top right there should be a card that appears from time to time in the video which will tell you how to get to another P4 paper or will take you to another P4 paper um, now if you would like to see other material to do with my A-level like M1, S1, P1, P2, P3 um, as well as the IGCSE material I have you can go to the description below and click on the correct link that will take you to my ASA2 material or my IGCSE material um, um, kind of index kind of lists. Um, thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon.